G'day guys, Shredder here. I've been trying to do some live streaming on YouTube, but it keeps cutting out after 10 seconds telling me that I can't connect to YouTube. So I've got a few things to work out there before I can obviously do some live streaming. I don't know what the hell's going on, uh, but I thought I would record the first round of the Ultimate Pass using Pro D1s and of course the best companion for Ultimate Golf, which is the UG Caddy. And uh, I thought I'd show you what I do with Pro D1s, and um, hopefully that will help a few people out, because, you know, I'm well aware that a lot of people don't play um, all the tournaments with premium balls. So sometimes it's good uh, to see what you can do with Pro D1s, and occasionally I get drops with them. So if any of that pays off for you, that's fantastic. If it pays off for me in this stream, that's even better. But yeah, can't live stream at the moment. Don't know why. Uh, working that out. But in the meantime, let's have a quick run through of round one of the Ultimate Pass tournament. And I'll do my best to explain some bits and pieces on the way through. Okay, so... What I like to do um, with balls like Pro D1, which gets a lot more uh, tailwind rollout than a standard ball, is with Red Barchetta, or Barchetta, whichever way you want to say it. Um, what I like to do is that I look at the caddy because, you know, this way I don't have to look at um, back in the game menu. It tells me it's got 80% shot view, which is a really useful thing. So in a tailwind, I would put between the end of the fairway and where the first bounce point is, as you can see here, that's what I've added uh, top spin to the max. We are sitting at about, I'd say, 64, 65%, something like that, to the end of the shot guide there. That's about as far as I would go in a tailwind because it's likely that that ball is going to roll off the end of the fairway. So 80% shot view is in a no wind scenario you'll see 80% of where that ball's going to go. So if we're at 60%, we're probably going to see it to about the 75, 80% mark. But with a tailwind, that expands exponentially. Now, if you're using a ball that's uh, like 82% wind reduction, and it's 2.6 mile an hour, it's not going to travel a great deal further. But something like a Pro D1 is going to travel considerably further, sort of 15, 20 yards further type scenario. So I generally wouldn't go much more than that. And in fact, I'm probably going to back it off a little bit just to be safe. So below the 60% mark, I'd be happy with that. Then of course we do our numbers, wind direction, and change the ball to a D1. We are looking at a 6.48 ring pull. I'd like it to land somewhere about there ish so we line this up line it up with about 4.6 and then pull through two rings so two rings the other side so if this is 4.6 then that is 5.6 uh, 6.6 .6. so okay I've gone a little bit too far didn't overly think it 0.1 of a ring not going to make a difference 0.2 of a ring not going to make a difference not here anyway let's see where this rolls out to now look at that literally a couple of yards short of the fairway and I was under the 60% mark so that 80% shot view expanded quite a lot 
But that's about the perfect placement. You, would, you couldn't get that any better than that. So there's a tip for getting as close to the green as possible. Because look, we are at absolute max root there. So that's the kind of thing that you need uh, to get into a good position with Pro D1s. Alright, so 7.4. Wind, change that back to root. Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, so we have a 70% shot view with root. Yeah, with a normal ball at two rings, this would roll out, so a TP ball would roll out about 1.4 rings or so. Plus it's downhill, so maybe even 1.6. So we are going to be looking at over a two ring rollout. Probably even two and a half ring rollout with a Pro D1. The issue we have here is we're going to be pulling uphill and downhill. So what I'll do... Line the shot guide up with the center of the screen so we pull back exact rings. I'm going to come back, say, three rings and have a look where I'm at. So we've got a three ring, probably going to have about a two ring rollout from there. So I might bring that a little bit closer and say 2.6 roughly. Yep, so we are at a 2.8 ring rollout, 2.2. That will be close-ish. Now, look on the side on, we are going to be pulling downhill significantly probably even a ring's worth. This is going to be really tough. So what I might do to salvage myself here is chuck on a hell of a lot of right spin. Go back out to max. Come back two and a half rings. Look at where that is. Now anything more than two bars of right spin is likely to come back much further than you expect. So to avoid pulling down that extraordinary embankment, I've set up left of the pin because I expect the full right spin to bring it back a little bit further than you'd think. And then we are just, I've guesstimated about a 2.2 .2 ring rollout. About 7.85 or something, so that will do. That's close enough. Now you see, I set up about six or seven cups left of the pin because that extra right spin brought me back, and that's about about as good as you could hope for. Right, now I like to aim over here into the rough. Now, what have we got? 8.5 at zero in that wind. So that tells me I'm gonna end up 7.5 rings right of where I am currently, which is gonna put me probably in the stream or on the other rough. So obviously that's not where I want to be. I want to be in this little section here 
because I've got a bit of a tailwind here. So if 7.5 rings is where it's going to roll out to, that's going to put me in the rough over there. How far can I come over? We go over here. Oh. Seven point five rings is going to put me about where that crosshair is there, but I'm also going to give it full overpower, which is going to put me about there somewhere where the crosshair is. So that's pretty good. And to avoid the trees, I'm going to put full left curl on this, as well as full left spin to keep it out of the rough and away from those shrubs. a pretty good spot and this has what does this have 90% shot view so keep it back from the hole a little bit zoom all the way out and we are just inside that no adjust zone about a 0.1 multiplier which is point eight four of a ring which is probably one or two ticks which is all you really need one tick is 0.6 two ticks is going to be over one so i'm going to go with one tick one even with normal balls okay so I turn the screen side on there because um, the side on view between the pin and where the ball drops is about max Bigfoot and Bigfoot's the club that I like to use. So I try to set up maximum range for Bigfoot. It's that simple, really. And you can do this with all of your clubs. You leave yourself in the tee box, um, turn your screen sideways, and then move the adjustment circle back towards the pin, and you'll see where the maximum range is for all the clubs that you like to use. And that will get you some consistency with playing. All right, this is good. So, that is 10 rings from Max. That is 13 rings from Max. Have a look and see where we are. Straighten that shot view up a bit. Okay, so with a normal ball, you would set up before the pin because the extra rollout uh, that you can't see, the 22% of that shot view you can't see, will actually continue to roll out even in a headwind, it'll just be compressed. But with a Pro D1, the rollout is 50% less because you have more headwind um, playing a role on where the ball goes. 
All right, so if it's pushing back harder, it, it's going to roll out even less. So we need to actually set up our shot guide just past the hole. Now, as you notice, I'm taking backspin off instead of moving the adjustment pin so that the numbers in the caddy stay the same. They're perfect. And I just ad adjust the backspin to compensate for anything that I'm missing. Now we're also pulling uphill, which is a shorter pull. Um, so I don't need to set up like half a ring past the hole, I don't think. Okay, let's set that shot guide up straight. Okay. Now, what I would normally do, because I've got a bit of a right to left push, as well as an uphill pull, I like to set up with the Pro D1s, about four or five ticks in the direction of the pull, left, of the, or, left or right of the hole. So I kind of like that where it is. Yeah, I like that, that'll do. I don't expect to drop these to be honest, but just giving you some idea of what I do, that's all. about 7.83 give or take that damn near dropped so that five ticks right of the hole if I'd just taken off a smidgen of a bar of backspin, that would have dropped. Again, another scenario coming from right to left with the wind. So that's Max Bigfoot. not too bad. Got ten rings. Oh. I'm already about a tick to the right, so I'll go one, two, three, four. That makes me about five ticks to the right of the pin. We are just past the hole by about a third of a ring. That'll do, that's close enough. Seven point eight five. Again, eight ninety nine.
Okay. Don't like being in between clubs, but let's try Pegasus. Now this club, Pegasus, has less shot view, which means there's going to be more rollout than you think. So this Pegasus you can basically set up at the pin with a D1, whereas the Bigfoot you have to set up past because you see more of the shot view. This one you don't. So it will roll out further. So where are we at? That's 10 rings. 10.32, so... We're going to come back 10.5. That way I've got enough room to pull. 10.3 rings. Take the backspin off, set it up with the pin. Seems alright to me. Let's This is a difficult green, so I'm not gonna go as far to the right. This is all a bit of guesswork here because I don't normally use Pegasus. Eight. Ten point three, roughly. Could have actually let that go a little bit further. But it must have caught that ridge and that's that's what's difficult with reading the greens, right? It caught that ridge and it pulled up quicker than it should have. Change back to my old clubs. Me, isn't it? Yeah. So that might not roll that far at all, to be fair. That's pretty damn good if you ask me.
Okay, maybe two rings from Max. Okay, two rings, that's pretty reasonable. So it doesn't matter. That's pretty much a pure crosswind. So estimate about a I don't know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 of a ring rollout. A bit further than I expected and didn't come back to the left as much as I expected either. Almost certainly going to be a root shot, and it's pretty much the worst pin position for this hole. The front pin location is bloody terrible. Even for premium balls, it's difficult. You're pulling down hills, up hills, sideways, angular stuff. It's it's a pretty tough hole. So to get close with a pro D one is pretty good work, if you ask me. So it looks like we are going with the root. 7.2. 10. About 14 and a half. Not bad, not bad. Oh, 
Now, for whatever reason, this is a tough hole. I've never quite understood what's going on here. Backspin is super sticky, and if you're doing a side a crosswind pull, you need to pull further than you think you do, and it, it just gets complicated. I'm not. I'm not. Look, I'm not the expert. I'm not a guru at this, but this stuff will get you close anyway. That's really what the goal is here: to get everybody a little bit better than what they are. See, I'm going to be pulling downhill quite significantly there. So even though this would have a ring rollout, I back it off just a little bit more because of how far I've got to pull downhill. Yeah, that's close enough. Backed it off just a little bit too far. But that lined up perfectly with the hole once it did its hop, skip and jump. Right on line with the hole, just a little too far. Point six six. So five's going to put me on the fairway, and I'll just do a full right spin and full right curl to keep me to the right of that uh, sand trap. Oh, with the full top spin to get me towards the green. six percent at the back here six percent elevation that's because there's extra secondary wind and all this sort of stuff and the hole is uphill from the, um, the shooting position on the fairway I kind of like that position. I like it left of the hole. Because you'll see how much this will curl around. It'll be an enormous amount. And remember, Pro D1s already require five or six ticks to the left or right of the hole. So 6% is what we need. And what was I? Five rings back. Is that right? Almost made a pull then without uh, paying attention to what I'm doing. Yep. Close enough is good enough.
And you see how much that curled back to the right? Could probably even go 8% there. Well, there you go, that's how I play with Pro D1s. Uh, hole three and hole four, I nearly dropped them. That was pretty unlucky if you ask me. But there you go. Nearly two drops, um, a little tweak of some backspin or a potential extra tick left or right of the hole and they'll start dropping for you. I mean, even that 1794, the hole one, full right spin, but knowing that that would mean it would come back to the right even more than you would think. I set up left of the hole, you know, by about three quarters of a ring and the damn near dropped that too. So yeah, that scorecard looks more like a, a, a Tor Pro trophy ball, but that's, that's what I do with Pro D1s and hopefully that will help you guys improve your game a little bit and uh, maybe tomorrow and on the final day, hopefully I can do some videos um i don't know if i'll be able to do the whole thing being 18 holes on the final day uh, but i'll see what i can do so there you go thanks for tuning in and uh, hope this gives you some insight into how to play with pro d1s that's shredder out uh, like subscribe and i'll catch you next time thanks guys bye